What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to demonstrate the new spans feature of Profile Builder 3 and I wanted to do that by creating a fence with uh, basically basically boards that alternate using the patterns function. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is just one of many of the new features that's included in Profile Builder 3. And if you're interested in giving this a try, you can check out Profile Builder 3 at the sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to create an assembly. And we've talked about this before. I'll link to a video about creating assemblies down below. But if you remember, what you need in an assembly is you need uh, basically your components as well as any profiles that are going to run along that. So in this case, we're going to start off and we'll just come in here and we'll just draw a 4 inch by 4 inch post. And then we'll extrude that to a height of, we'll call it 4 foot 6 inches for right now. And then we're just going to take that and select it right click we're gonna make it a component and we'll just call this support post you can really call the component whatever you want to do and so then you need to add it to your assembly and so I've gone into the open the assembly dialog option and I'm gonna go into the component function and I'm gonna click the plus button so the plus button is gonna allow me to add a vertical support or a repeating component into my assembly so you can just come in here and you can just click the button for pick from model and then you're just going to select that component that you just created. And you can see how now that shows up in your preview pane up above. So this will give you kind of an idea of what this is going to look like. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to add a profile. And the profile is going to be what gets extruded along this object. And so in this case, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. So tap the R key. I'm going to tap the right arrow key to lock that to the red axis. And I'm just going to draw a two comma six so close to a two by six once again i realize the dimensions of a two by six are a little bit different but those numbers are easy to work with and then all we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to add a profile so in this case we're going to come in here and i'd actually already created this but you can just click the plus button with this selected and you can just call this something like fence board and hit OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to take your selected face and that's going to bring this up as a preview right here. And the only thing I want to change in this case is I want to change the start point to the bottom middle instead of the center. And then once you've got that created, then you can come in here and you can extrude this out. This is now in here as a profile. So now I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to add this to this assembly. However, in this case, instead of adding it as a profile member, which is what I would have done before, I'm going to add it as a span. And what a span is, is basically an, basically an object that is created based on the supports that are in here. So I'll show you what I mean, but if you remember before, if you added a profile member, this object would automatically get extruded along the whole assembly. Well, spans allows you to adjust if that happens or not. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to click the plus button, and it's going to ask me what I want to add. And in this case, I want to add a profile member. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to pick from model. And that little piece that I created is a profile member. So I can select this, and this will add this to my fence. And so now you can see what's happening is this has added this in here as a profile member, as a span. And so if I was to come in here just right now, based on that, and I was to add this in here, you'd see what would happen. And we're going to have to fix this a little bit. That's OK. Um, you'd see what would happen is this is getting extruded, but the extrusion is actually stopping in the middle of this support object. And then the other one is starting again. So it's doing a complete extrusion along this whole thing. Or it's doing a complete extrusion based on just the distance between this support and this support rather than just doing it along the entire length. And that's really powerful because now based on that, you've got a few different options. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to fix all of our offsets and make this so this is kind of centered in this post. And we're going to do this using our left right offsets and also our start and end setbacks. And so you can see what's happening right now is this is halfway into this object. What we want to do is we want to add a left right offset of one inch. And you can see how that moved this out. And we also want to add a start setback. And in this case, since these are four by four, we want to add a start setback of two inches. 
And we can go ahead and name this. We'll just call this alternating fence. And we'll go ahead and save this profile. And then we'll just select it with our eyedropper. And then we'll click the button for update to update this showing our changes. And so we also want to set an end setback of negative two inches. And so we're going to come in here and we're just going to type in negative two here. What that's going to do is right now this is extruding this to the edge of this post. We want, we want it to extrude an extra two inches on the end so that it's centered on this post. And so once you've done that, you just save over your old assembly. So we're just going to save that as an alternating fence. Then we can select this. We can click the update button. And there we go. And so now, what we have in here, and I probably should have named this, we'll go ahead and call this alternating fence. And we'll just save it again. And so now what we need to do is we need to create our repeating fence posts or our repeating uh, are repeating fence runners or boards. And so one nice thing that's been added in uh, this version is now if you come in the spans and you click the plus button, it automatically adds a copy of whatever object you have selected, in this case my span, directly above the one that you had in there before. Since we have this selected, we'll go ahead and uh, update it. And you can see how that board is now getting added. And so in this case, we're just going to use the numbering to figure out which options we have in here. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to change the patterning. And so that's what's really cool about this new version is you can see how this down here gives you the option to adjust when these objects repeat between the different supports. So in this case, I can do it on every support or I can do every other support. So on my span number one, for example, we'll go back down to the first one. We can set that to go every first, every third, continuing like that. And so in this case, I'm going to set my first one to alternating this one. I'm going to set my second one to alternating the other way. And then I'm just going to keep going up my fence just like that. So I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to set the So you can see how what I'm doing in my preview is I'm just setting these so that they run back and forth. And so if we were to come in here and we were to update this, you can see how now this is repeating between every single, this pattern is repeating between your different supports. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to keep adding these until I get to the top of my fence. And so you can see how basically I've set these to alternate between my different points. So now if I come in here and I draw a longer version of my fence, you can see how that comes in here and it uses the patterning to create this, these alternating pieces. And so there's a bunch of other options in here like allowing these to curve or allowing these to sag, which is really useful for if you want to create like a, like ropes or that sort of thing. We'll talk about those in the future. But you can use this function, the spans function, in order to create really cool patterning repeating objects within SketchUp. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Next week we'll talk about one of the functions in here that allows you to do this with components rather than profiles. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you like this function? How do you feel about Profile Builder 3? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you want to give Profile Builder a try, um, check out the links down below for a link to the free trial. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.